whatever persuasion he used, this man who is unsettling your minds. Believe me, he, he shall bear God's judgment. If we are in union with Christ, Jesus, circumcision makes no difference at all. As for these agitators, they had better go the whole way and make you impulsive and he made mistakes, we make mistakes. Honestly, I never much went in for studying Peter. It's not that I ignored him, but being a good Protestant, I mostly paid attention to Paul, the prolific New Testament writer and theologian. Paul was a liar and he admitted it. He said that he was a Roman born citizen so he could get away from the Romans who was persecuted, who were persecuting him. He said he was a Roman born citizen and he also admits that he'll say whatever he needs to be, whatever he needs to say to anyone in order to get them to hear his words. He admits that he lies. He also referred to the apostles of Christ as quote super apostles most condescending of ways because it is so much and it is incredibly difficult to sort through it all when you are so polluted with the confusion of the enemy people say I create confusion I'm not creating the confusion you are already confused so in that it is confusing for you but it isn't confusing for those that know so for those that can't see and hear it also says in Revelation that I will harden their hearts for they will not see, they will not hear with their ears. And in fact, that's Isaiah that he's quoting. Uh, the book of Isaiah, Those... uh, I believe that's where we're at, Isaiah 52. Therefore my people shall know my name, therefore they shall know in that day that I even, he that spoke, behold, here I am. And only the few of them will be taken from that hardened heart interpretations of the rapture is essentially what has actually already taken place and and those of you that were taken know it because you were taken out of this world and put back into it how many of you watching this video have actually been out of this world and you've come back you were removed given information given a complete wealth of knowledge that you are just now beginning to grasp. The heart that hasn't been hardened is yours that hear my words and understand with your heart. So Christ chose grace. The enemy chose destruction and death. Malachi chapter 3. Behold, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. See, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire. like a launderer's soap. And he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, sons of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver. Then they will present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Not... this sacrifice mercy then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord as in days of old and years gone by then I will draw near to you for judgment and 
I will be a swift witness against sorcerers and adulterers and perjurers, against oppressors of the widowed and fatherless, and against those who defraud laborers of their wages. Yeah. Yep. And those who defraud laborers of their wages and deny justice to the foreign. But do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Robbing God. Because I, the Lord, do not change, you descendants of Jacob have not been destroyed. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have turned away from my statues and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you ask, how can we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in these things, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you blessings without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the, fu the fruits of your land. And the vine in your field will not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will call you blessed. For you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Book of Remembrance Your words against me have been harsh, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we spoken against you? You have said it is futile to serve God. What have we gained by keeping his requirements and walking mournfully before the Lord of hosts? So, now we can call the arrogant blessed. Not only do evildoers prosper, prosper, they even test God and escape. At that time, those who feared the Lord spoke with one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So, a scroll of remembrance was written before him regarding those who feared the Lord and honored his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day when I prepare my treasured possessions, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him, so you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, when all the arrogant and every evildoer will be subtle, uh, stubble. The day is coming when I will set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts. Not a root or branch will be left to them. Not a root or a branch. This is over. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go out and leap like calves, calves from the stall. Then you will trample the wicked, because you're given power to stomp on their heads. For they will be ashes under your soles of your feet on the day I am preparing, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statues and ordinances I command him, for all Israel at Horeb. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and awesome day. So that's before the actual, you know, that great day that we've all been waiting for of the Lord. So God will send him beforehand, Elijah. Don't forget about his servant Moses and the statues. And he will turn the elders' hearts of the he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. I might as well read the. Well, I might as well read one and two for the first time in my life. 
This is the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. So the word of the Lord to Israel, he's using Malachi. One of them? Yeah, Malachi 1. I have loved you, said the Lord, but you ask, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? declares the Lord. Yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. And I have made his mountains a wasteland and left his inheritance to the desert jackals. Though Edom may say, we have been devastated, but we will rebuild the ruins. Kind of like what Obama said. We remember, we rebuild and all that stuff. This is what the Lord of hosts says. They may build, but I will demolish. They will be called the land of wickedness and a people with whom the Lord is indignant forever. Like this isn't going to, this isn't a temporary thing. You will see this with your own eyes. So you're going to see this with your own eyes. And you yourselves will say, the Lord is great even beyond the borders of Israel. The polluted offerings. A son honors his father and a servant his master. But if I am a father, where is my honor? So a son honors his father and a servant his master. But if I'm a father, then where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is your fear of me, says the Lord of hosts, to you, priest who despise my name? But you ask, how have, we, how have we despised your name? It's like they're asking God how they despise your name because they don't even, they're like, who are you? By presenting defiled food on my altar, like flesh from the midst of your garden that you were told not to eat, lest you die in a spiritual way. But you ask, how have we defiled you? By saying that the table of the Lord is contemptible. When you offer blind animals and sacrifice, wait, hold on, I don't know what contemptible means. It means despicable, detestable, hateful, okay. It's, loathsome, revolting, just sickening, I would say, unworthy, cowardly, disgraceful, shameful. But yeah, all right, I get the point. But you profane, you profane it when you say, the table of the Lord is defiled, as for it is fruits, as for its fruits, it is contemptible. You also say, oh, what a nuisance, and you turn your nose up at it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring offerings that are stolen, lame, or sick. Should I accept these from your hands? Asked the Lord. But cursed is the deceiver who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it but sacrifices a defective animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. But cursed is the deceiver who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, like the last male rhino in his flock, vows to give it, but sacrifices a defective animal instead. Seems kind of shady. And like broken promises. A warning to the priest. And now, this decree is for you, O priest. If you do not listen, and if you do not take it to heart to honor my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse among you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already begun to curse them, 
if you haven't been able to notice. Because you are not taking it to the heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants, and I will spread dung on your face, and the waste of the waste from your feast, and you will be carried off with it. Man, that is some harsh words. Then you will know that I have sent you this commandment so that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord Host. My covenant with him was one of life and peace, which I gave to him. It, it called for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and nothing false. Nothing false was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness, and he turned many from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should preserve knowledge, and people should seek instruction from his mouth, because he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But you have departed from me, uh, you have departed from the way, and your instruction has caused many to stumble. You have violated the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts, so I in turn have made you despised and humiliated before all the people because you have not kept my ways, but have shown partiality in the matters of the law. Man, this is all going, this is all so going on right now. Judah's unfaithfulness. We do not all have one father. Uh, do we not all have one father? Did not one God create us? Why then do we break faith with one another so as to profane the covenant of our fathers? Judah has broken faith, and abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the Lord's name, for Judah had profaned the Lord's beloved sanctuary by marrying the daughter of a foreign god. As for the man who does this, may the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob everyone who is awake and aware, even if he brings an offering to the Lord of hosts. And this is another thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears. given by Constantine. The Baroque masterpiece of the Basilica is the Chair of St. Peter's, on both sides surrounded by angels and clouds spilling into the Basilica. I think... Spilling into the Basilica... With weeping and groaning because he no longer regards your offerings or receives them gladly from your hands. Yet you ask, why? It is because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have broken faith, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Has not the Lord made them one, having a portion of the Spirit? And why one? Because he seeks godly off offspring. So guard yourselves in your spirit and do not break faith. Do not break faith in the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. He who divorces his wife covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. So guard yourselves in your spirit and do not break faith. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you ask, how have we wearied him? By saying, all who do evil are good in the sight of the Lord, and in them he delights. Or, where is the God of justice? Uh, so, very, very telling. So, anyway, but we go on and we're reading here in uh, the book of Isaiah. Uh, I believe that's where we're at. Yeah, Isaiah 52. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I even 
he that spoke, behold, here I am. Okay. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger of good tidings that announces peace, the harbinger of good tidings, and that announces salvation that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Now, if you recall, this is exactly the same thing in Malachi chapter 3, the prophecy that, that Elijah would bring, which Jesus refers to as John the Baptist, and saying, you know, he's going to make the crooked path straight and everything, but he also goes into almost the exact same verbiage right there. 